Well, hello everyone. I am Dr. Boz and it is Tuesday night and we are here talking about how do you survive Thanksgiving? We have some tips and tricks, but also some pretty good advice for those of you that are struggling, maybe like I struggle. <laughs> I am looking forward to um, uh, hearing from all of you. Uh, I've got some questions that I want to uh, address. You've got uh, a chance to give me those questions through the chat. I think something is wrong with my feed here because uh, it's showing up in one place and not the other. Let me do... Um, Hmm, those feeds are not showing up like they're supposed to. I'll just keep going. Uh, I will switch it over here. I can see your chats. I, they just aren't showing up on my feed like they usually do. So thank you for checking in. Glad that you can see and hear me. Uh, I'll move that microphone just a little bit closer for those of you that uh, say the sound could be a little louder. I am have some great uh, insight for tonight too and some announcements that um, I think you're going to be pretty excited about. If you have uh, the perfect Thanksgiving plan, then you can shut this off. If you're curious about how to get through Thanksgiving with a bit of uh, keto, um, can you say wisdom by the time I've been doing it this long, then uh, stick around because even if you're a newbie, if you're at your ideal, uh, ideal weight, or if you're kind of a food addict. Uh, I've got advice for all of you on how to get through Thanksgiving and probably because I've been to all three of those places in the past. I'm going to start with a tradition which on the Dr. Boz show and that is to check my numbers. I am at the end of a fast today. Uh, I fast every week and join you at the end of it uh, looking for um, a goal, uh, staying uh, consistent about what I do week after week and this show helps with that. I also lead a support group each Tuesday morning, and uh, so that helps. Not only is it great to have a community of people that show up and uh, really do uh, want to improve their health, but they are um, they're my new community here in uh, Tampa as I uh, refined my beginning. Um, so ketones are just reading in at, or glucose actually reads in at 34. You know, I checked it a few minutes ago. It's now beeping at me saying, you're going to die. You're only at 34. I'm not going to die. Um, but I, ha I did do a really good job on my fast this week, and I had a, couple, uh, uh, a pretty strong workout yesterday. So I need a different glucose. I need a different ketone strip for some reason. Hold on. Hang tight. Uh, there's, it's giving me an error for that strip, so i got to get a different one out. Um, I'm going to have to poke myself again if I don't hurry. <laughs> All right, here comes the ketone. It's uh, just about ready for me. It's blinking away. All right, now I'm checking. Um, all right, there we go. All right, so ketones are counting down. There's that glucose. Uh, yeah, so it um, doesn't show up quite as well with all this uh, light. Um, so ketones 1.7, glucose uh, 34. And uh, I did calibrate that. I checked it right before, <laughs> right before uh, the show and thought, I better make sure that's right because I feel really good for a blood sugar of 34. Uh, but this is what happens when you practice fasting. When uh, I do this every week and in recent weeks, I've pushed my metabolism a little bit by, um, by adding a workout, uh, something I hadn't done for a while because... Moving at 50 is <laughs> terrible. Uh, next week, I celebrate my 51st birthday, and it will be uh, about a, a year and five months here in Tampa. And we have some great announcements that I, uh, I hope to give you a little bit of at the beginning, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that as the show goes on. Um, but I want to first hop over to this page. Uh, I like to give... Um, uh, a shout out to the places where I'm going to be speaking next. And uh, the next place is uh, in Boca. Uh, Boca Raton, I think, is actually the full name of the city. Uh, here in Florida. So it's my neighbor. 
Uh, and I have been asked to speak at the Low Carb uh, Conference. If you type in Dr. Boz, you do get a little bit of a discount. Uh, you'll click on events, and I will be at the event in early January, January 13th, 14th, and 15th. There is a pre-session about addiction that if you come a day early, you can take a look at that. They did have some recent posts, and I got to have the privilege of meeting their writer and talking through just some of the strategies that I use in my practice, but um, if you're looking for a little more information about um, about what that interview was about, you can check out the site. But um, I, even if you are can only attend online, this would be the one of the one of the best um, uh, uh, medically supported, meaning the amount of research that I have to prove what I'm saying before I can get on stage uh, has been refreshing, actually. Like, it's nice to see the rigor behind the evidence of what they're teaching at this conference. And because of that, if you're anywhere in the health world, including a physician, you can get continuing medical education, the highest bar to reach for that. I've done continuing uh, community educations and con continuing nursing education, continuing uh, ther education for counselors. Um, and several times done CME, but it's always the most rigorous. So if you're looking for that, I highly support this. I really want this conference to survive. So uh, it, it comes with people supporting it. And I will be there. I'll be there in person. And it looks like if, if, if my luck turns out, I'll get to come to the Thursday Addiction Conference as well. Um, I do have a couple of uh, announcements on the page. Uh, if you go to bosmd.com and you click on our store, I would like to announce that, um, I don't know if this is, a, is turning into a tradition or not, but I am happy to say that I get to, if you click on courses uh, and then click over on brains courses, that's my favorite one. This gives you a, a 20 minute preview of what the first lecture is like inside the brains course. Uh, and then um, I am happy to tell you that our Black Friday, I give a $500 a discount for anybody who wants to join our uh, our class for December. Uh, this will be the fourth time I've given the class. Uh, each time I am reminded why this. Get, why did the Department of Defense pay me to do <laughs> to teach this? Well, I, I'm reminded when I go through the curriculum and and really look into the to prepping for it and getting uh, my head around this. Um, you can take a look at the sales page here, but um, that little video also gives you just a two-minute preface about what does your brain look like. Uh, let's see if I can land on the place that yeah, I like. Had a stroke. Oopsie, yeah, I don't want to talk. <laughs> uh, but it shows you just the differences between what the brains look like, what does your diabetic brain look like, and what does, um, what does it look like if there's been methamphetamine. So I love that course. Um, I, I, I teach it uh, at least once a year, but um, it might be turning into the best way for me to end out the year is each Tuesday in December this year, I will take these students. I've got the class half full already. We had a, a waiting list because folks wanted to do it earlier. And I said, just wait, um, I'll, I'll lead you through the course in December. And so we've been able to fill half of the seats that uh, we were hoping to fill. It is, again, the most expensive course I offer, but I don't do that to scare you away. I really am only looking for people who are truly interested in spending time looking at that curriculum, going through the curriculum, and then bringing uh, your cases and your questions to class. Uh, so um, you'll, if you're on our email list, which I highly recommend you do, we've had a paucity of selling, uh, sending those out for partly because of my busy schedule. Um, but I will tell you that the email that's coming out on Friday talks about our one of my favorite students, Mr. Metcalf, who's 80. He took the course uh, and really was one of the most inspiring students to say, here's what you can do with your brain improvement at 80. Um, not only that, he used the course as um, his donation to his church and his youth group uh, to use that course to teach uh, the next generation about their brains. I make my kids, I made my kids all sit through this brain lecture. Um, they had to advance mom's slides because I couldn't do that myself. <laughs> but it forced them to sit there for this uh, this training, and uh, I, I I'm really thankful for the for just pushing through. Because if you've ever asked teenagers to do things, you sometimes don't win that and really helping them to say, no, here's what we know about the human brain. And here's what we know about marijuana. Here's what we know about alcohol. Here's what we know about head injuries. 
and then spinning it into um, more useful things as the course goes on. So I, I love the course. It's my best work. It's like this much keto, but uh, you may not know that my, my first love of in medicine was always reaching peak brain performance. So as I try to reestablish here in Florida, I will tell you the first uh, invitation for patients to join the clinic will be the ones who've taken the brains course and helped me through this transition, which is taking longer than I wanted and has a few setbacks. So keep praying for me and my team that we can get all the way through that. Specifically pray, pray for the, the nurse who's helping me get the clinic uh, EMR set up. Uh, uh, it's no little task. So, uh, but let's get on to the, tonight's topic. Um, I have uh, a drink that I am drinking. I'm going to tell you more about that later. Uh, and I will check my ketones at the end. Um, but I have, um, let's see here. I want to go back. Oh, this is the one I want to be on. Yeah. I have a, um, uh, I want to frame who, who I was thinking about when uh, I was preparing for how do you handle Thanksgiving? How do you approach when you know there's a feast coming? And what is it that I'm doing? But what is it that at different stages of being in keto, I would recommend? Mm. Oh, that tastes good. Um, all right. So I am going to push the, the button that I, I thought was ready. And here it is. Um, this one here. All right, so I have this slide here and I'm gonna to try to use this as a way that I take notes. So if you're looking at your holiday, I am uh, here to say that the typical approach usually is divided into um, three different um, categories, if you would, of keto patients. The first one is the newly keto person. They step into the keto world and as the holiday approaches, they become um, the master of the recipe books. They have figured out how to substitute every single one of their favorites. Um, they are, they usually know, <laughs> you can usually pick them out of the support groups if you have a support group because they'll know that the price of, let's say, um, coconut flour and um, almond flour at three different places because they have used these recipes to say, but I love these foods that I've had forever and I'm going to try to figure out how to substitute them for my favorite meal. Um, and although that's not a bad approach, that's often what I find in, patient, in patients or uh, students who are new to the ketogenic diet. Uh, and this is a typical response to a ketogenic, um, a recently transitioned keto person. The second category of people that I usually find are the people who are at their goal weight. They have said, you know what, doc, I've been keto for a few years. Uh, I'm where I want to be. I'm really looking forward to the meal. And their approach to the, to the, <laughs> to the Thanksgiving holiday is almost always uh, let it ride. Um, I'm going to eat what I want. I'm going to eat as much as I want. Um, and I'm not going to really worry about what happens when... Um, I, I get all that temptation in front of me. Um, when I look at the third category of people within the ketogenic world, it's these are my people. <laughs> these are the people who have had a food addiction. And by food addiction, I, I'll tell you, they don't necessarily call themselves a, a food addict. I, I think, um, you know, even taking care of addiction patients, it took me a long time to say, am I really addicted to those things? So let me tell you how, how I know if you're addicted. So let's just review. Um, I know if you're a newbie, uh, or you know if you're a newbie, uh, if you've got every recipe for Thanksgiving figured out, how to use all of the substitutes, the keto uh, flours, the keto uh, sweeteners, uh, they really are in a, they've got everything substituted. Um, goal weight is pretty easy. You know where you're at and they're not usually worried about the holiday. But you know you're in the addiction mode if you are A, counting down to the by the seconds maybe, <laughs> I've done this, uh, of when you get to eat the food, of when it's time for that thing you've been holding off on forever and ever. Uh, and I, I bring this up mainly because uh, it usually speaks to a lot of people that are counting down to a big meal. Um, but 
Uh, I'll tell you, the addict out there often says, um, I, uh, I know when I start eating the food that the chances I stop, you continue. So there are many people out there, and I'm one of them included, that as I have now been several years on a ketogenic diet and led you know, thousands of students through this journey, um, but prior to that, spent a good 15 years leading addiction patients out of the depths of alcohol addictions or you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll. If you can find something to be addicted to, those were the patients that uh, were part of our clinic, not our whole clinic, but just a part of what we took care of. Really reaching for brain, um, reaching for that brain performance, that peak performance. And as they did that, um, um, we would, of course, start with, you know, stopping the drug they're using uh, and then working on those coping skills of how do you, how do you really help them to improve their, um, uh, just the journey of when they're struggling. And I will tell you, um, it's a different approach once you are, when you realize that food is your addiction, because it's not like you can say, stop eating. And you'll, you'll often find when I, I'm working with a food addict, uh, you can, you, not everybody will realize, I mean, even I would say, am I a food addict? Am I addicted to it? Uh, one of the places that I would find, oh, I can tell you that it's a level of addiction because when I would go to eat after a fast, I was the biggest celebration meal like, oh, no, no, I deserve this. Oh, I haven't eaten in two days. I deserve this. And I would use this as this, it was this joy. It was this celebration. And in the end, uh, the pattern continued that I, even if I fasted for two days, I would celebrate so much in the days where I was eating that there was no more progress for my improvement. It was only when I started applying some of these tactics, which I'd spent two decades teaching other people about how to handle their alcohol troubles or their you know, other um, addiction troubles that I was like, oh, I guess my, my skill, my escape had been eat the food, eat the food. So as I look at the approach for what do you do about this, um, the typical approach for most two newbies is that they're eating the extras. Uh, the typical approach for people at their goal weight is they eat what they want. And the typical approach for people with addiction is they're counting down and they get to the meal, <laughs> have that first bite. And it doesn't matter that the size of the pie is um, nine inches, the whole serving size, the pie is the serving size. <laughs> Um, and I have an analogy that um, I heard the other day on a podcast I was listening to that having a addiction to food is they eat a little bit and then they say, oh, forget it. I've already eaten too much. I might as well just keep eating. I might as well just keep going. And uh, the podcaster shared that's kind of like um, that mentality that if you have a flat tire on your car, well, heck, you should just pop the other three tires because you've already you've already got a problem. You've already got a mess. Uh, so you might as well just trash the other three tires while you're at it. <laughs> I thought that's that's actually kind of true that when you know you've got troubles with food and you start eating and you then begin to eat because you're driven to the um, to the level of uh, of hunger for food that is, pathologic, that is addictive behavior, um, uh, stopping is almost impossible for, for the people who are addicted. It's like, it is not impossible, but it feels that way, especially when you're in the midst of it. Um, I do want to make a, a little bit of an announcement as I look at some of the questions that are coming in. Um, I, I, I've asked the ladies uh, to put the questions, anybody who has a comment or a question about the brains course, I want to make sure I answer those tonight. Um, I'll give a little bit more about what we're going to do with the brains course when we get to those questions. But I, I, I see several questions coming in and I forgot to put that in there that if you have questions or if you have a brain question, I would love to do that. Um, answer that first. Okay, so now let's get to my advice. Um, let's go back here and we're going to take this uh, over here. And um, all right, so uh, if you look at the typical approach for these holiday uh, meals is what we've just gone through, but let's start with my advice. For newbies out there, I would like to tell you about cholecystokinin. And I have a video on this coming out that I don't think has been released, but it's a good one. Uh, I, I talked about it a few years ago, and so I, I kind of found the slides on it and brought it back up again. But cholecystokinin is this hormone 
um, that is in your body and it is secreted when it sees fat and protein. Uh, the, the hormone, um, it, it's an it's a oily hormone, if you would, is secreted, it, or it, okay, excuse me, cholecystokinin stimulates the oily deliver of bile out of your gallbladder. And if you don't have a gallbladder, it stimulates the oily deliver of bile out of uh, your liver to emulsify that fat and that protein to absorb that nutrients. But the other thing cholecystokinin does is it sends a signal to your brain to that you're not hungry. It suppresses the need for food. And it's, it's, it's like more powerful than several other of the appetite suppressions that are out there. Yes, caffeine will suppress your appetite a little bit. Um, nicotine suppresses your appetite. But cholecystokinin does this from a, a central process, meaning it deep within the brain. And although caffeine and nicotine work within the brain, it is a much different mechanism of how cholecystokinin does that. So to walk into a temptation room and deliver your cholecystokinin as quickly as possible, which is to put fat-filled food in your stomach, and if, yes, it will make the bile do what I just said, but it also slows down the peristalsis of your stomach. It also suppresses the uh, um, uh, gastric emptying, so it just kind of really slows things down within the system in hopes that that food will move through your gut slowly. The reason for that is those are where the most nutrients are, is in that high fat food. So when newbies come and say, okay, I've got all this food prepared, or I have these substitute foods that I've made, and they really do. If you <laughs> if you look in your cupboard and you have an ample supply of coconut flour and almond flour, and you know how to make every recipe that used to be grandmother's favorite, uh, filled with flour, sugar, and brown sugar, um, now be the Thanksgiving favorite, uh, you're probably not going to stimulate any cholecystokinin from that. Cholecystokinin is not stimulated when you swallow a bunch of carbohydrates. And even though those substitutes of almond flour and coconut flour and whatever else you're putting in there to make that look normal, um, it, it has less carbs. It's not no carbs. And I find that people who are making the recipes that are filled with all the substitutes, they tend to overeat. They tend to say, it's not a fourth of a cup of that that I eat. It's a cup and a half. And they really do. They eat it all. The amount of carbohydrates that ends up in that gut now with the fat and protein, because that's probably part of your keto meal. And now you've got a bunch of carbohydrates in there. And that doesn't slow down the peristalsis. It doesn't suppress your appetite. Um, it it gives you a pretty good gas. <laughs> so uh, when when people say, what, what would you recommend uh, for a newbie? And that is, I would, I would teach you about cholecystokinin. And then I would encourage you to, at the beginning of the meal, to eat something high in fat and high in protein. I wonder what that could be. <laughs> so I bet you can make a sardine dip. <laughs> I had to fit sardines in here somehow. Yes, I, I, if, if sardines were what you're going to eat, I also was going to show you what my favorite things to use as the chips are. You can see they're almost gone. <laughs> so I have uh, the beef brisket by it here um, is one. It's usually what I eat on the way home from my, <laughs> yes, I love uh, Aloha22 who knew exactly what I was going to say, sardines <laughs> and exclamation point. Uh, but this, this this is actually my favorite one from, from Carnivore is the brisket and because it's so fatty. Now I'm not going to break my fast because I want to check my numbers at the end of the show, but Oh man, uh, if I have some of this at the office and the interns eat it, I get very owly. <laughs> like, no, that's what I eat on the way home from my fast. But I will tell you that the beef hearts are actually a very good, they're, they're a firmer uh, chip, if you will. Um, and the best chips that I use from Carnivore Crisp are actually the chicken breast ones. Uh, so that it's there's two ingredients in these chips. It's the meat that's on the headline here and Redmond salt. And then it's cut in super th thin layers, and then it's um, dehydrated and baked, and it is, oh, it's so good. So I'm sure if you scooped a sardine dip onto your chips, but you, the key for, to that would be eat that before you eat whatever it is you made out of that coconut flour or almond flour. Uh, because those substitutes, although they are keto and they are truly low carb, um, we're talking about 20 total carbohydrates a day. Now, 
you're probably going to overshoot that on Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoy it. But to mitigate that, to not slash all four of your car tires because you're accidentally not giving yourself any hormonal protection when you eat that meal, uh, I would encourage you to put the fat and the protein before you start, um, before the, the higher levels of food get into your system. Um, so that's step one for the newbies. Let's go to the next one. For those of you that are at your goal weight, saying, Doc, I've been doing this a while. Um, I have, I don't know if I can say I'm at my goal weight. Um, so this isn't me. I would probably, I'm the third line. That's who I am. I, I love my food. Um, but the people who are at their goal weight, I'll tell you another way I know them is they do not eat the whole pie. That's how they got at their goal weight, guys. <laughs> they didn't eat the whole pie. Um, but they do say that the pleasure they get from real food, r- real sugar, uh, real um, uh, non-substitute, no almond flour, any of that, um, is it's a higher level of enjoyment. Um, but I'll tell you the key to, to, to how these folks succeed, uh, and that is they focus on the people that they do eat they do usually eat the real sugars but they are um they are very focused on what is uh what is the reason you're at thanksgiving and it's usually for the people i know there's all kinds of like holiday jokes about you know people dealing with family but um as somebody who's going through their second thanksgiving without the generation above me alive anymore I would highly recommend that you find a way, find one little thing to like about the person that you think you don't like uh, and and then make it your goal to pour into them, to be present fully with them. And maybe you need a piece of pie to do that. (laughs) But uh, the the people who end up at their goal weights, uh, when they approach a holiday, I'll tell you, they usually are not keto for that day. Um, but they are really good at keeping their portion sizes controlled. Um, they, they're they not in it for the love of the food. They're in it for the people, uh, and they really do focus on that. And I've learned that uh, again and again through addiction recovery uh, education to my patients, um, through the counselors that have helped me educate the patients, but also um, as I have had to deal with line number three, which is um, if you're an addict. And again, how do you know you're an addict? Because when you start to eat, you, you do it, you eat the whole pie. One bite leads you to the next bite. And I'll tell you, uh, it's to the point where when, when I've been uh, through this game enough times that I know if I start, um, it's, um, I, 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 I do do a way better job. But let's go back about a year ago, especially um, right after the death of both of my parents. Uh, as soon as I would start to eat, I would just say, oh, I don't care pop the other three tires on my car. I do not care. I just, it feels good and I want it. And then I would not stop. But the next few days feel awful. Um, and it, to get back on the keto wagon, it was just, it was, it was awful. I felt my gut didn't like it. Um, I, my brain was super sluggish. I didn't, I mean, I could have totally done away with any um, level of uh, thinking like, don't put any patience in front of me for sure, but even like to do some writing or do anything creative, like the focus was gone. I paid this price of a binge, essentially, um, of saying, no, it's it's a holiday, I deserve this, I've, I'm ready for this, and then I would push too far. So what do I recommend for people who are in that zone? Um, well, first of all, <laughs> I, I would not do the first bite. Uh, and I know that's easy to say. Uh, I've been to the, the that zone too where even if you have um, those the bites of food, uh, in the 21 day course, uh, we did a couple of things that I thought were excellent. And that was we taught people how to get through a moment. Um, we did things like yes, played games in the brain and said, no, these are YouTube videos you can play when you're trying to get your brain to not spiral in the wrong direction. My favorite, something I've taken into um, the curriculum I used inside a jail, uh, because it was cheap, easy, safe, and did not require <laughs> any pre-authorization for getting the instruments inside the jail. And that is something called left-handed loops. I teach that in all my courses. Uh, I do that with patients. I do that with my children. I do that, not with husband, but I should sometimes. Um, but the other thing that I would um, 
So yes, not the first bite is where things go wrong. Do not slash all four tires when you start to, if you start down the wrong path. Uh, the other place that I've asked, I've told people to do is if you find you have to have that bite, you have to have the one bite, that you strategically put the bite at the end of the stay of wherever you're at. Meaning you wait till you're about to leave. And when you get to the end of that stay uh, and you have the bite, you leave the house where that food is at so that it's not your temptation anymore. And then I had uh, um, one of my teammates say, and the other thing that is a great idea for anybody who is trying to get through a holiday um, and says, okay, I'm one of those that really does uh, have too much food at the wrong time. And once I start, I can't stop. But if, if you have the foods that you shouldn't have, that you promise yourself a three-day sardine fast after Thanksgiving is over, that you enter into a stage where you say, okay, if I eat that, the next uh, three days are my sardine fast. Now, this teammate does not like sardines. Now, I don't mind them, but she really does not like sardines. And she said, hopefully the can of sardines would be enough that they don't want to go back to, uh, that they don't want to eat that sugary stuff. Um, it might not be enough, but if it is, if it's something you do and you fall off the wagon and you say, okay, what do I do now? Because I've been to the other side of this. I've been to that day after Thanksgiving where you do not feel good. Your gut is really yucky. Your brain doesn't work at all. And I wish I would have known how much that uh, sardine fast would have resurrected. Just saying, put in the high protein, put in the high fat, that portion control with the cans of sardines. And if you remember the rules from the sardine fast, my 21 day students know this. I don't care what hour of the day it is. The only food that you can eat for three days is sardines. First of all, it's incredibly nourishing. So whatever it is that you dumped because you ate too much and didn't feel good and maybe got some loose stools because of it, uh, sardines are incredibly nourishing. They shoot that cholecystokinin way up, and so you do have really good satiety. Um, and during that time, uh, the other two things I would do to help people rescue, so yes, I would do sardines. Uh, the other thing I would do is if you do eat too much during the holiday, I would use ketones. I would drink ketones. That's a really big deal. Um, adding ketones to your circulation. I'm gonna check my numbers here at the end, drinking a new product that I haven't told anybody about yet. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, but I'm gonna show you my numbers from it. Um, and if you were at my support group this morning, I sampled it to them, it was so fun. Um, and uh, so the first thing would be the sardine fast. The second team would be swallow ketones. Uh, your mitochondria want the better energy. When you shoot that those those carbs way up, yeah, your insulin's gonna go up as well. The glucose goes up, the insulin goes up, and it shuts down the ability to make a ketone. When you add ketones back to circulation, that signals the liver, hey, make some ketones. So even in your as you're cleaning up the diet after you binge, uh, as you eat those sardines, the production of ketones is rapid and robust, especially if you swallow them as you eat the sardines. So I know that I said that you couldn't eat anything else for those three days in a sardine fast, but you can swallow ketones. That's the, that is the key. The third thing that I tell patients to do uh, is to go sweat. Now sweating could mean exercise, but the easiest way to get the sweat uh, is to go to a sauna, to get yourself exposed to enough heat. Uh, again, I've done this a few times. I, I have a few more that I would um, recommend. You, you, you get yourself to the 180 degrees in the sauna is something that I recommend. Some of the infrareds do not get you hot enough to do that, so you wanna make sure that you're pushing to a sweat. If you can hold the sweat for 20 minutes, you shouldn't do that on the first time you try it, but you should try to get to 20 minutes. And if you really are feeling punk and you're saying, what's the fastest way to push undo if I eat too much? Eat sardines while you're shopping on Black Friday. Uh, sip on ketones while you're shopping on Black Friday. And the third one is find a way to get to a sauna during in between shopping sprees. 
All right. So um, uh, Rick just wrote in saying, how long in the sauna? Well, it is an exercise mimicking process. So if you've got heart disease and you've not been in a sauna and you don't, your body's not used to that much heat, well, the first time I did it, I made it four minutes and I was really proud of it and thought, who the heck wants to do this on purpose? I'm never doing that again. Uh, I think that was three years ago, four years ago now. Uh, and then I got good at it and the goal, the data comes from trying to stay in that 180 degrees or in that high how, high heart output, high cardiac output is high uh, for 19 and a half minutes. So really would love to see the it, people reach for that when they're trying to say, I mean, I'm, I, we're just giving your mitochondria a workout. That's what you're doing there. So. You can, of course, go exercise. Um, I, I find that most people, um, when they're on the ketogenic diet, have had such struggles of being overweight that their joints don't really like the exercise until they get the weight down. Then their joints are feeling better. They do a much better job of walking. But again, it's a process of um, improving their, um, their their, their identity of how they think about themselves, but also how well their system um, responds to a uh, the stimulus of the heat or the exercise. It's just, it gets way better. Um, one of my moderators and one of my favorite uh, uh, patients, students, and colleagues now uh, is Patrick V. And you can see he, he is uh, a big fan of the sauna. His sauna is infrared and he'll answer uh, questions for you there if, if you want. Let me see if I can, I, I really want to push the refresh button on my, my, I did something wrong here and I can't find the refresh button. So I'm trying to see if I can do it while I'm live. I've messed things up doing this before. So that's why I'm pretty careful here. Can't see it. Hmm. Well, I keep thinking I should be able to, your chat's just not showing up in my feed, feed for some reason. So I don't know what I did. I'll have to fix that. But I was trying to get to your questions. All right, so before I get to your questions, I, I do want to tell you that this coupon that will be in the emails, it's coming out, um, that will give you $500 off of the Brains course is the all one word, Black Friday. And um, this I, I will uh, offer this coupon on Black Friday. I will also be starting the, the Brains course uh, for those live um, uh, sessions. It will be Tuesdays with Dr. Boz uh, before the live show in, in December. And so for the four Tuesdays of December, we will have live sessions where I get to assess your brain uh, for any of the new students. And um, really, it's amazing what people learn. Just like those students that were part of the 21-day course, um, what you really uh, can embrace is um, that when you're hearing the education about someone else, uh, when you're hearing their story, what their struggle is, the amount of learning that you get because you can emotionally be distant and and therefore actually receive some of that information better um, when you hear a case that is similar to yours but not yours. And it's why the classrooms, I, the students that um, have been on the waiting list, I said, just wait, just wait. We'll, we'll fill up the classroom and you'll be amazed at how many of the people in the classroom have the exact same problems as you. Even though they can go through the curriculum before we meet, um, discussing the curriculum and really their cases is what I think, um, that's where the best reviews come from about the 21 day course, excuse me, about the brains course. And, and of course that brains course is, um, I, I originally set this up in a way that I wanted leaders in their communities to teach this, that I'm that mom that goes to the middle schools and teaches about marijuana and alcohol, but you don't have to be a doctor to do this. You just need a couple of really good stories and then the lessons to teach what a middle schooler would wanna know. And through this course, you have the curriculum. Like I have a couple of, um, um, they're foster teenagers actually. So the programs teach teenagers, but these teenagers' parents are going through a tough time. So they're in this home essentially. And the curriculum that they do every, I think it's every Thursday night, uh, is one of the little modules from that brains course. That's what I designed that for. Uh, what I since learned is there's a lot of grandparents out there who, 
as much as they thought the brains course was going to be how they help their kids with marijuana or their grandkids with marijuana. And, and I'm just using marijuana because it's something I don't ever talk about here on the show. I only talk about it in the brains course. Um, that peak brain performance is um, uh, those grandparents were doing several things that didn't help their brains hardly at all. Um, all right, so let's get to your questions. Uh, I know you've been writing them in, and uh, my team has been putting them over there on the questions board for me. Uh, so let me click over there and um, welcome you to sharing your questions. Let's get over here. There we go. And Steph is our first one. Um, oh, and it's a brain question. Yay. <laughs> let me get over to where that's at. Um, so Steph writes in and says, uh, let's just take this a little bit smaller so I fit all of her question on there. Uh, can we heal our brains if we've had mild cognitive impairment? So I've done a couple of videos on this and uh, I would encourage you to Google Brains and Dr. Boz on YouTube. You'll find those videos, uh, especially with mild cognitive impairment. Uh, in fact, today, I need to like celebrate that the article that I talked about, I think it's probably about six weeks ago now, where um, one of the gals who's been coming to our support group, her daughter has Down syndrome, and um, it is not uncommon for Down syndrome to have um, Alzheimer's in their 40s and 50s. Her daughter was 44 when her memory started to fail, uh, and from the age of, maybe it was a little later than that, 46 when her memory started to fail, anyway, somewhere in there. Um, and as she was struggling, her daughter, which is not uncommon with Down syndrome, um, had an obsession with food. Um, so she put her on a low carb diet. And for over the course of four or five years, they lost, she, her daughter lost 100 pounds. But during that time, her brain got worse. It wasn't until this past year in January when the woman started coming to the support groups and said, could my daughter benefit from this? And I said, yeah, but you got to check the ketones. You have to have the ketones in circulation in order for you to get the benefit. And within six weeks of being on a ketogenic diet, the, her daughter was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. She had had severe impairment. She could not, she was incontinent. She couldn't be left alone anymore. Uh, she, she actually, navigation is really difficult with some of the Alzheimer's presentations. She couldn't navigate navigate her body around a table without being told hey take two steps to the two steps come on go around the table come on go now go straight you know, she had to be you know verbally guided how to walk her body around the table and that wasn't a problem before that she also one of the one of the best stories by the mom is she never used three syllable words in her whole life so she starts her daughter on a ketogenic diet and she did a good job she had 20 total carbohydrates. She was following the, the keto continuum, doing the protocol, and she was checking ketones. So she went from not producing ketones to producing ketones. In six weeks, she was off of all the memory medication. She was off of the, she'd been put on seizure medication. Um, she was, um, had completely restored her continence, could hold her bowel and bladder. Her navigation skills came back. And then she totally surprised her mother when she replied to a question by saying, yes, I understand. And the key about that is not only is it a full sentence, but it's a three syllable word, something she had never used in all of her years. She had never had a three syllable word. So I'm just showing the cognition improvement that happens when you have mild cognitive impairment is almost always related, or at least in part connected to how insulin resistant the brain has become. And it will not let the fuel of glucose inside the cell, inside the, the astrocyte, the brain cell that needs the fuel. But ketones can get in there. And so putting them on a ketogenic diet, even supplementing with ketones, there's lots of evidence that say, look at the, the bridge that we can, the gap that we can bridge when the fuel inside the cell couldn't get to the brain cell. But when we offer ketones, they, 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 the glucose stayed the same, the ketones went up. And that is where their cognitive performance reversed. They were able to say, I'm, they're no longer, you know, the scores, they were no longer mild cognitive impairment. It reversed the problem. Hmm. So, um, so the answer to can you heal? Um, I also don't, I want you to miss, it's not an accident that I do this show live at the end of my fast when my ketones are doing really well. <laughs> like, it's real. I, I want my brain to work well too, right? All right, let's go to the next question. 
here we go. Melissa says, does your brain's course go over MS and ways to help? So MS is one of those, um, those d diagnoses that's really near and dear to me. In the Midwest, um, there's lots of women specifically that have multiple sclerosis. They get it in their 40s and it destroys them, destroys their life, destroys their families. It's very unforgiving, unpredictable. And do I talk specifically about MS? No, but do I have several of my patients with MS that I said, you have to watch this course. And specifically with MS, I need them on keto. That each year I try to pick a topic that I'll do in my speaking series that this past year, meaning 2022, before I really honed in on hemoglobin A1C, I was preparing an MS lecture. Now, it's a really difficult lecture to animate and to teach because it's, if I'm teaching to normal, I mean, audiences that are not physicians, getting from this level to this level without losing my audience, it, it just took a lot, it's taking a lot of animation. But if I can, if I can continue on the path, my speaking series for 2023 will be multiple sclerosis and why what does it why does why does that get better when they follow these rules so if i had a loved one with ms it would be the absolute first place i spent my money is to say what would i what did i do in my clinic it teaches i mean i don't want to teach the the prescription side of things although i do teach about one medication in there that's really important uh, but it's module 12 it's the last one what is module one two three four one through ten are the modules my teenage boys needed to learn in order for their brains to not only not fall into the sabotage of what happens when brains don't work right, but um, also to learn why is it so important that mom has a regular bedtime for you because of what your brain is doing between now and 26 years old. So yeah, not only would I do it for MS, I, I, I love the course. I love teaching the course. I love reminding myself what, what are the rules because when I teach it, I do a better job of all the things that I'm not, I'm human too. I screw things up too. Stuff writes in, can we grow new brain cells? Mm-hmm. I repair damaged ones. So yeah, that's actually one of the, one of the questions in the course is because uh, the course is not boring. <laughs> the course is definitely interactive and it is a place that you will um, be answering some multiple choice questions. You'll have three truths and one false. You need to find the false. And one of those questions has to do with, can you regrow brain cells? When I was in medical school, eh, the data was, nope, you cannot grow medical, you cannot grow brain cells, you cannot do that. But there is evidence that there is the brain, there are certain parts of the brain that have a stem cell-like effect. Stem cell-like effect means that one cell can make a neighboring cell that's a replica of itself. Before that, uh, the only places that had a stem cell-like effect were the liver and the cervix. I mean, you can cut off a section and it grows back, okay? And then the first other things were like, well, there's some things in cartilage that seem to be have stem cell effect. And then, but brain was off limits. There's no, there's no way the brain could do that, but that's not true. There are two areas of the brain that can replicate and make cells like themselves as long as there's one cell left. And of course, repairing the damaged ones is all about autophagy and how important that is. Again, this 12 hour course has like eh, this much about keto. The rest of it are the rules about what do you need to do to stimulate and to get the best brain function. And they're not prescriptions. This is just the rules that everybody should know. Again, I was hoping every middle school would take this curriculum and teach it in their middle schools. Uh, now, some are thinking of doing that, so God, I'll keep praying for them. All right, let's keep, go by the next question. Um, okay, so uh, Bonnie writes in and says, does cholecystokinin, let me take that down a little bit, does cholecystokinin uh, break down the fat before the protein or both at the same time? Uh, well, it emulsifies the fat. Again, uh, you absorb, it will emulsify the fat enough to be absorbed Proteins really get broken down by some enzymes in the pancreas that are mixed with like amylase, and then they get broken down into single amino acids once they get further into the metabolism. So fat would be the answer. The first one is fat. Aloha 22, I love your energy, Aloha. Every week you have a good question for me. Let's see what you say this week. Um, and he shows up, he or she, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, shows up every time. 
just like clockwork. If you are not a newbie, <laughs> but you're not at goal weight, does that mean you must be a food addict? <laughs> I'm not arguing as much as I'm trying to assess where I fit. Uh, how far in advance should we have sardines and fat before we start the first meal? Um, that's a great question, Aloha. Um, so the the advancement of the uh, of how far should you eat that is, uh, it, I mean, cholecystokinin um, will be peaked at, as long as there is a bolus of fat in that in that stomach. So even as little as 15 minutes before you eat, like you get to the event and they have a meat and cheese tray, the meat and dip it in some mayonnaise, <laughs> like find the sour cream. And that's why I said, if you take sour cream and you mix it with sardines and maybe throw in some capers or pickle juice or something, I don't know, <laughs> lemon juice, uh, you can make a sardine dip and then you should use, um, chips to go with it. I actually think I had, I, I set those aside so I could put the, uh, the links to those, uh, those, um, products. Cause I, I love these. And again, it's a new company or a newer company. They are really trying to offer foods that are ketogenic. So I'm going to put that in the chat there. Um, I think it'll let me do that. Let's see. Huh? Oh no, let me put it on. So let me try that. There we go. And then we're going to do this one again. I'll take this one out. And then that one. Okay, so I put those in the chat that those are places where you can go to get some. That's one of my favorite things to have on hand is like I put it in a monthly order. I If I don't eat it, the interns eat it. And they should never eat my brisket because that makes not for a good day for them. <laughs> um, so just to, to actually go back to, are you a newbie? You're not at your goal weight. Um, then you're probably somewhere like me is that the addiction is usually, uh, at the third spot. So you can just join me and stand on the side that addiction is probably, uh, loving food is something we've probably done a little too much in our life. Uh, if you're not ready to call yourself an addict, it's okay. I'll still be here. All right. Next question is Karen, uh, Dr. Boz, my sister-in-law, wants to know if going keto will harm her heart. She's had a quadruple bypass six years ago. Her A1C is nine. Oh my gosh. Absolutely, she needs to go keto. I mean, this is fixable. That A1C of nine is the most dangerous. It is, it is like pouring flames down her arteries by having that much blood sugar and that much insulin around. Oh, Karen, I wish I could capture and teach her for you. Um, it is one of the reasons why um, there are a few things in the Dr. Boz channel that I hope you see. Uh, one of them is that I am I am a teacher first. Uh, that having patients show up to my channel and learn, and then not having the burden that they have to lift everything to teach the next person. That when you have bought the 21 day, when you have bought the um, consistently keto course, yes, you can listen to an audiobook. I'm going to do this. You can listen to the audiobook and learn the story about my mom. That's the fastest way to take a newbie and or somebody who doesn't know anything about keto and you can hear how snarky I am in the first few chapters saying, this must be fake news. Um, but then if you want the path, what do I use with my patients? It's that book, Keto Continuum. It comes in an audiobook. It's story format so that your brain can process it. Most of my patients that come in with a broken brain, even though reading has been in their past life, they don't like to read they'll listen. And that's why I put those on audiobook. That's why I put them in story format is for the lowest level of brain function, like capture them with a story, make it a little entertaining. And then the workbook that goes with that keto continuum. So this one's the book and that's the workbook. So the workbook plus the audiobook, those are great ways. But the other really way to do this is host a support group. We encourage you to do that. It doesn't cost anything. Host a support group and use uh, your education from the 20, from the, the online course for keto on teaching the other people. Um, that's how you stay consistently keto is you lead a group. All right. One more question before I check my numbers. Cause I'm really curious what my ketones have done in the last hour <laughs> with that drink. Um, okay. I, I showed up this morning and my ketones went from 2.6 to 4.2.4. I wrote it down. I think it was they went from 2.0 to 4.2 in 
in 15 minutes. That's, I'm so excited. All right, last little um, question here. Uh, so Kathy writes in, is there information on the brain's course about Parkinson's? Again, Parkinson's was one of my first loves. Um, any evidence that diet can slow the progression of Parkinson? So I have living evidence. I might even be online with us tonight uh, that there are several uh, patients who took the online course. They are the brain's course. They are Parkinson's patients and the dramatic improvement on how well their brains have aged. Uh, if you were in the 21 day course, you might know the lead guy who had the most posts and was the most, um, most, um, I'm totally blanking on his name. Just give me a second. Um, oh. oh, Angela, help me with his name. She's going to post it here in a second. I can't believe I can't think of it. Uh, anyway, he was like the best cheerleader in the group. But, oh, yes, Larry. Larry Spears, that's his name. So Larry was great. And he has a buddy that he got to be buddies with because of the brains course um, that has Parkinson's. And to watch those two reverse age over the course of not just keto, but then taking keto. Keto's this is a little part of what really helps that human brain. It's the rest of the stuff that they applied that says, I, I, I mean, they, I could hardly recognize them. 10 years younger and his buddy had severe Parkinson's. And yeah. Uh, all right, before I go, I'm gonna check my numbers. So I do want to show you that the, the course um, is about half full for this class. So yeah, praise God, that's awesome. But if you want to join our online course for the Brains course this time around, I would wait till Friday and I would type in that little code called uh, Black Friday and it takes $500 off and you and I will be buddies throughout the month of, um, of December. Every Tuesday, we'll have a little, little soiree, a little party online and you'll get to hear what I think about your brain. All right, I'm gonna check my numbers again. So again, um, um, it's, oh yeah, it's gone. Okay, so I, I just saw the last bit just about 10, 15 seconds ago. So let's see what it did. Um, and then I am happy to say that my all my kids are home from college and so it's gonna be a fun uh, next couple of days for me. Our, our daughter from, our, I put daughter in quotations because she's stuck here. So, oh my gosh, my ketones. Okay, so my glucose is 60. My ketones are 1.8. Um, so the glucose went up. The ke What were the ketones at the beginning? They're going to be higher in a few minutes. I can just feel it. Um, uh, so if you follow me on Instagram, uh, I will post my numbers of what my, what my ketones are in about another 10 minutes. So I got started a couple minutes after, so we are a couple minutes after. Happy Thanksgiving. Join me next Tuesday. I will actually go live earlier in the day because I have a medical association doctor's meeting and I, I want to meet some other physicians in the area. So this is the one time a year they have that. It happened to be on a Tuesday night and it happens to be on my birthday. So I'll see you next week for my birthday. And if you are signed up for our emails, check out the emails because they have some pretty great stories in them. And I will have little videos in the in the emails that I will record over the next, no, not next Monday, it's next Tuesday. I think it'll be two hours ahead of time. So I, I think we're aiming for four o'clock. So I'm done by five o'clock. I can drive across town to be at the event by 5.30. So it'll be two hours earlier and I'll see you on my 51st birthday. Uh, Signing off as Dr. Boz, we reverse medical problems with healthy keto living. Oh, and if you want, uh, I have an end screen that I was going to tell you about. Um, oh, it's the one on support groups. So if you are curious about that little support group thing I was talking about, I have a video on why that's such a big deal. On the end screen, which doesn't happen on the live, only on the re-record, click on the end screen. We get big points uh, when, but from YouTube when you guys click on those. So I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate you doing that. God bless you. See you next week. Happy.